Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. This is the Carver TFM45. This amp was sent in by a viewer and he's listed several problems with this unit. In addition to resolving these issues, he wants me to look into replacing the speaker binding post as well as replacing the two standard meter bulbs with some blue LEDs, so that should be interesting. Let's start by verifying the problems that he has listed. Number one is a thump during power on and number two is uh, humming out of both speakers. There's another problem as well, but let's start with those two just by turning it on without any input. Here we go. Definitely a big thump at power on, and if you listen close, you can hear the humming. It's more pronounced out of the left speaker, but I believe I hear it out of the right speaker as well, so that's a definite problem. Let's uh, play some audio so we can hear the third problem. All right, so hopefully you can see the meter from the left channel is moving pretty well, while the meter on the right hardly moves at all, and that's accurate. I can hear the, uh, the output is much greater from the left channel than the right, so that's another problem as well. We have at least three problems, the thump during power on, the humming out of both speakers, but more pronounced out of the left, and uh, greater output from the left channel than the right. So let's open it up, take a look around. All right, here's the inside of this beauty. I've already cleaned it out with some compressed air, so we're ready to go. We'll start in the back left here where the power comes in. We have the input fuse on the top here. Below that, some filtering. This unit is triac controlled, so you can see the triac in the back here mounted to the chassis. Small input board here with uh, several components, so I see a uh, voltage selection switch. Below that, a relay. Some other components, nothing too exciting. Of course, in the center, we have the power transformer with several taps off of the secondary leading to the power supply section on the right. So this entire board here is the power supply board. You can see some caps up top here, several smoothing caps on the bottom as well. These two huge caps off to the right are also smoothing caps, but they're mounted separately for obvious reasons. They're just too big. So these are the smoothing caps for the high voltage rail, which is 118 volts. So these are 9,000 microfarads at 125 volts. Behind those, we have the bridge rectifier for the high voltage rail here, also mounted to the chassis. In the front, we have uh, a bulb for each meter on top, and then the meters themselves below the bulbs. In the front here, out of sight, is a, uh, a small board. It looks to control the meter intensity, or the bulb intensity, as well as send the signals to the meters. And then in the center, we have the amplifier modules, one for each channel. So you can see just how huge the output cables are for these amplifier modules to handle the high current and then a lot of uh, power transistors per channel as well. Looks like 5 PNP and 5 NPN per channel. That's pretty much it for this unit. I think I want to start by trying to isolate the problem with the humming. All right, I'm going to start by measuring the AC voltage on the output of each speaker so we can have a baseline for this problem. So I'm going to turn it on now. So we'll start with the right channel. We didn't really have much hum out of that. So yeah, that's pretty low. 21 millivolts of AC. Still a little higher than I'd like, but that's not really a big problem. Here is the big problem. 28.5 volts of AC coming out of the left channel. That's crazy. So that's our baseline. Now I have looked at this just a little bit before shooting this video, and this AC voltage on the output does slowly diminish. You can see it dropping right now. So over time this drops to somewhat similar to what, the, what we have in the right speaker, but um, it's still just unacceptable. Obviously, it takes way too long. It should be in the, in the millivolts, very, very near zero volts AC right from the beginning. So now we have that baseline. We can start troubleshooting. All right, my first attempt will be to rule out the power supply section as the source of the hum. And so we're looking at the power supply board here. And we have the uh, pins leading to the left channel's amplifier board here and the right here. So. Our problem seems to be primarily with the left, so we're going to look at these pins. Now there's three different voltages, actually there's six. There's a plus and minus 118 volts, plus and minus 67 volts, and plus and minus 31 volts. So it'll be easy enough to check if we have any AC on any of those rails. So looking at the schematic, pins 1, 2, and 3 are the negative voltages, and pins 13, 14, and 15 are the positive voltages. Now the pins on the bottom, which you can't see, are pins 1, 2, and 3, and these pins on the top are 13, 14, 15. So 
I'm going to start by checking the positive voltages up here, 13, 14, 15, and then we'll move on to the negative voltages on the bottom. So I'll turn it on. We'll start with pin 15, which should be positive um, 118 volts, DC, of course. And we'll verify that. So DC, 100 and almost 114 volts DC. We'll move to AC. And 0 volts of AC. OK. We'll move to pin 14. This should be positive 67 volts. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I obviously don't want to slip. And I also have to watch where I put my hand. And I'm not on there yet. Let's see if I can. There we go. So 64 volts DC. Let's move to AC. Again, nothing. OK, we'll move to the final positive rail, which is pin uh, 13, which should be approximately plus 31 volts DC. And we're at about 30 volts, OK? And let's go to AC. Absolutely nothing on there for AC. So we know that the positive rails are not producing the humming. I'm going to reposition everything, and we'll test the negative rails, pins 1, 2, and 3. All right, so this is about the best angle I could get under the circumstances. So let's check pin 1. This should be negative 118 volts. So we're at negative 113 volts DC. Let's move it to AC. Again, nothing there. We'll move on. All right, here's pin 2. This should be negative 67 volts DC. And we're at about negative 64 volts DC. Switch to AC. Nothing there as well. All right, we'll move on to the final test point. All right, the final point is pin 3, which should be negative 31 volts DC. Here we go. About negative 29 and a half volts DC. We'll move to AC. Nothing there as well. So I'm a little surprised, but the issue is not coming from the power supply. So after several power cycles as part of the troubleshooting, I hooked the speakers up again, and this thing seems to be getting worse. So I'll let you listen one more time with the speaker connected, just the left output, so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see on the meter, as well as here, that uh, that left output sounds absolutely terrible. The output intensity is much greater than it was, that humming seems like there's a there's a higher frequency there as well so there's definitely something seriously wrong with this I didn't have much more luck on finding a root cause while this was installed so I removed it from the unit it's pretty simple so you have to remove the output cable here just desolder it then you remove the four screws mounting the heat sink to the chassis and then you slowly and carefully pull the amp board away from the power supply and that's it it comes free so with it removed, I was able to do a more thorough inspection. I was looking for signs of thermal damage on any of the components, as well as signs of uh, damage to any of the electrolytics, and I didn't see anything, nothing at all. I looked at the back as well. No signs of damage. I'm actually surprised this thing looks to be in good shape. So I checked all of the junctions of all of the output transistors mounted to the heat sink. All of them checked perfect, except for this one right here. So let me show you that. So we're shorted there, and there, and there. So this is shorted across all three pins. This is the final output transistor of the negative side. It's Q22, so it's a PNP. And this is a Toshiba 2SA1302. And I believe it's something like a 150 watt 15 amp transistor. I was able to find a comparable transistor. This is the Toshiba 2SA1943. And it's uh, other half the Toshiba TTC5200. That's the NPN. And so I spoke with the owner. He wants me to replace all 10 of the output transistors. So that's 5 PNP, 5 NPN. So we'll get that done. He also wants me to recap this. So there's eight or nine caps on this module. And uh, so I'll do that. And he also wants me to do the same thing on the other amp module, so I'll replace all output transistors and recap the entire unit there. And he also wants me to recap the entire power supply, so we'll do that as well. So I'll get started on replacing the transistors and the capacitors on this amp module. 
All right, you remove all the screws from the transistors and it comes off pretty easily. A couple things, I will clean the heat sink off with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. It's kind of interesting, they have three dabs of thermal compound in between the heat sink and the thermal pad here. I'm not exactly sure why, if that was necessary. And uh, the thermal pad, although it is convenient and I'd love to reuse it, it looks like it's it's ripping and uh, it's pretty thin and so I don't trust it. So I'm just going to replace it with some new ones, individual thermal pads like I've used before. That should work just fine. All right, this part's a little bit tricky. So I'm mounting the transistors to the heat sink. There's a couple of traps here. So number one, you have to bend the pins in a particular way so that the transistor can mount flush with the heat sink. And number two, you also have to make sure that the thermal pad is completely covering the backing on the transistor because these are metal backed and the metal backs are tied to the collector pin. So if that thermal pad is offset like that and you get enough force uh, between the transistor and the heat sink, you could short the collector to the heat sink, which is ground. So you don't want that. So I'm going to make sure it's aligned perfectly like that. There's a little bit of play here left and right and up and down, but not much. So you really have to be careful when you're doing that. All right, all of the transistors are now mounted to the heat sink. And I think it turned out pretty well. The last thing I want to do before I solder them to the board and then clip off the leads is to make sure that I don't have any shorts. I want to make sure that the thermal pads are completely covering that metal backing. So. Very easy. I have the negative lead of my multimeter hooked up to the um, heat sink here, and I'm just going to test. So there we go. So if I'm shorted, I'll get a beep. I'll go to each center pin, and obviously I don't want any beeps. And um, I've already checked all of these as I installed them, but I'm just showing you what I would do. No shorts. So my thermal pad orientation is correct. I'll get these soldered on, the leads clipped off, and then we can reinstall this and test it. All right, this amp module is 100% complete, and I think it turned out really, really well. I think it's going to work just fine. So I still need to recap the power supply and the other amp module, but um, I do want to test this. I want to make sure that there's no other problems with this amp module. So I'm going to install this. We'll put some audio into the system, and we'll test it. Okay, so the amp module has been reinstalled. I'm going to turn the unit on now, and I just want to see if that AC out of the output of that left channel has improved. So here we go. I'll turn it on now. And we have 12 millivolts, 13 millivolts of AC. Much, much better. So now I'll hook up some speakers and some audio, and we'll see what it sounds like. So the left channel still sounds good. The output is, as you can see, still greater than the, the right channel's output. So I think once we replace the transistors on that right channels board and recap that, I think that'll improve the right channels output. And uh, there's still a little bit of humming out of that left speaker. It's nowhere near what it was before. As we saw, there's no more AC. I'm thinking that that's either normal or it'll be corrected after we recap the power supply. So I'm going to get started on uh, replacing the transistors and recapping the amp board. All right, so I recapped and uh, re replaced all of the transistors on the right channel's amplifier and as you can see it still has less output than the left channel. So when I'm listening to it through the uh, speaker it still sounds really good which is great. We still have a problem though so I'll have to continue the troubleshooting. I'm guessing there's something wrong with one or several of the transistors. There's also an op amp 
that um, could have an issue with it as well. So we'll continue troubleshooting the right channel. To troubleshoot the right channel's amplifier module, I'm just going to use my multimeter in AC mode and I'll inject a 60 hertz, 100 millivolt peak to peak sine wave at the input of the amp using my signal generator. We'll start at the output from each channel and then we'll work our way backwards until hopefully we can find a problem on that right channel. So let's start with the output from the good left channel here. Again, we have 100 millivolts at the input and we have about 5 volts of AC on the output. So let's check the right channel. And there we have only about 1.3 volts of AC. So that makes sense. We have a, a much greater output from the left channel than the right. Time to start working backwards. I do have the schematic, however, it's really difficult to read the uh, markings for the components because I believe they must have been hand drawn originally but I was able to work some of them out. So I'm going to start with the output transistor on the positive side, that's Q20, and I'm going to check the base of Q20 on both channels. So I'll start with the good left channel. Here's Q20. I'll go right to the base. And we have about 5 volts of AC on the left channel. Let's check the right channel. 1.3. So we'll keep moving backwards. Now I'll check the base of Q11. So Q11 is pretty close to Q20. We'll start again on the good left channel. And we're at about 5 volts of AC on Q11. Let's check the right channel. Still about 1.3 volts of AC. All right, I'm going to move back a little bit farther now. So I'm going to go close to the input here and look at the base of Q2. So I'm going to use Q2 because it's pretty easily accessible. It's right here. So I'll look at the good left channel's base of Q2. And there we go. Now we have a much smaller voltage. We have 0 0.033 or 33 millivolts of AC on the left channel. Let's check the right channel's base of Q2. And only 8 millivolts, so much, much less. So we're still lower. We're still lower on the right channel, so we have to move back even further. So if we look at the schematic, the base of Q2 is basically the output of that buffer op amp U1. So I'm suspecting that that op amp may be the problem. To confirm that the op amp on the right channel is bad, I'm going to measure the input and compare it to the output. So we know the good left channel's op amp has an output of about 30 millivolts of AC. I'll measure the input now on pin 3, and we also have 30 millivolts of AC. So we have 30 in, 30 out on the left channel. We know we have 10 out, less than 10 out on the right channel. Let's check the input. Again, pin 3. And we do have 30 in. So we have 30 millivolts of AC on the input of the op amp U1 on the right channel, but less than 10 millivolts out. So that op amp seems to be the problem. I don't have any of this style in stock, so I'm going to have to order it. And I have so much other work to do, I'm going to have to break this up into two parts. I still have to recap the entire power supply. I'm going to recap this entire front board here. Still have to replace the uh, speaker binding posts. I have to upgrade the bulbs, the meter bulbs for LEDs. A lot of other work to do. So please join me in part two. We'll start off by seeing if the op amp fixes the problem with the right channel and we'll continue the rest of the work.